just fine with me! Yeah! No way anybody's still alive on that joint! Wouldn't count on that if I was you! Any of you new guys feel like blowing up? Word of advice! Do it now! Three week wonders. That's what we called the new guys. That's all the training they got, and it wasn't enough. They usually didn't last very long. No matter how much training you got, or how strong you are, when you strap up and step on a battlefield for the first time, it changes you forever. Terrell was just another strip of sand out in the middle of nowhere, but for many of us, it would be the last thing we ever saw. Tommy! I'll see you on the beach!
Worm and Scumbag. Just a few of the names I was given by my beloved drill instructor in the summer of 1941. Before then, my biggest problem was delivering groceries and not breaking the eggs. Now every time I turn around, some crazy Jap's trying to gut me. I remember asking the recruitment officer, what's the deal with you guys? I swear to God, he looked right through me and he said, deal? We're Marines, son, and we deal in lead. Next thing I knew, I was on a train for San Diego. Soldiering for the Corps. Boot camp. beginning was God. All else was darkness. So God created the heavens and the earth. He divided the earth between land and sea, and these he filled with many assorted creatures. The dark, slimy creatures of the oceans God called sailors, and he dressed them accordingly. The flighty creatures of the air he called airmen, and these he clothed in uniforms which were ruffled and foul. The lower creatures of the land God called soldiers, and he gave them trousers too short, covers too long, and pockets to warm their hands. And on the seventh day, as you know, God rested. And on the eighth day, at all 500 hours, God looked down upon the earth and was not happy. God was not happy! So he thought about his labors, and in his infinite wisdom, God created a divine creature, and this he called a Marine. And these Marines whom God created in his own image were to be of the air, the land, and the sea. And these he gave practical fighting uniforms, so that they could wage war against the forces of Satan and evil. And he gave them evening and dress uniforms so they might score with the ladies on Saturday night and impress the hell out of everybody. And at the end of the eighth day, God looked down upon the earth and saw that it was good. But was God happy? No! Because in the course of his labors, he had forgotten one thing. He did not have a Marine uniform, but he thought about it and satisfied himself in knowing that, well, not everybody can be a Marine. This puts me one step above God, because I am a Marine. You remember that, and we'll get along just fine. Now you maggots have exactly three minutes until I expect you standing at attention outside. Fall out! Whew. He scares me, Frank. I think maybe he is God. Well, Jimmy, just keep your head down and do what he says and we won't have to find out. Willie, you coming? Oh, uh, yeah, Frank. Oh, uh, hey, Tommy, right? Uh, Tommy Conlon? Uh, my name's Willie Gaines. This here's Frank Minoso and Jimmy Sullivan. Where are you from, Tommy? Oregon. You? Guys, let's head out. We don't want to piss off God, do we? Today is the day we separate the men from the girls. 
You little pukes will learn the basic necessities for survival, and then maybe, I said maybe, you will become a part of the United States Marine Corps. Are you ready? Aye, Sergeant! Now, Baker Squad, you are to sit tight and wait for your babysitter to show up. I am not him. Able Squad, I want to see you ladies hightail it over to my obstacle course on the double. Move out! I want to see nothing but asses and elbows, ladies! Let's make him proud, boys. Stick together. You got it, Frank. Come on, Jimmy. Tommy? Come on, boys. We can do this better than that group. Let's show them what we got. Now get over that wall! Not bad, ladies! Now run through those tunnels! is the Marines' mud pit. Think of it as your own little swamp. Move out, piggies! Now get on your belly and crawl like the worms you are! You said it. Knock it off, you two. That was the hard part. Let's move! Who died and made him, boss? Welcome to my firing range. You will listen to every word I say. I have not lost a single scumbag on my firing line, and I will not lose one today. 
Do you ladies understand me? Oh, now gather up some ammo, pick a spot on the range, and we'll get to work. Take one box each, boys. One box each. Aim at the target in front of you. If you hit one, and I mean the bullseye, wait for it to be replaced with a new one. If you move, it will not be very accurate. So keep those boots planted. If you nail down, you will be more accurate. And getting down in the dirt is even better. So try all three positions. Ready on the right. Ready on the left. Stand by, targets. Fire! Rifles available for you today. See how many hits you can get on the long range target. Get me over to Germany and me and this rock will be in that war all by our lonesomes. Talk is cheap, Private, but that's some pretty fair shooting. Let's see what you boots can do with the autos. You more head back to the ammo table and Corporal Bates there will listen to each an M1928A1 Thompson submachine gun. Do not let those rifles in the dirt, maggots! are fully automatic, but that does not mean that you should just spray and pray. Take your time to aim and fire the weapon in short bursts only. Man, not bad. Fetch your rifles back up and let's move on to the heavier stuff. You four with the rifles! The MP here will continue to supervise your apparent lack of shooting prowess. Let's go, men. Hold up, Private. I'm gonna need to take those weapons from you. First things first. Private Conlon, grab that demolition charge from the table. We haven't got all day, Con...
You'll see behind me that we have some beat-up jalopies. Today, we're gonna blast the living hell out of them. Private Conlon here is gonna get things started. Private, get your sorry tail down there and plant that charge on one of those cars. That thing is live, so watch yourself. Get your butt back up here, Private! Good work, Private Conlon. You may just yet make PFC. Let's move over to the grenade station. All right, pick up a couple grenades. Don't worry, ladies, these are training grenades. You think I would trust you with a real grenade? No! Pull the pin and let them fly. See if you can hit some of those barrels out there. Very well, pond scum. Some of you could do better, but it'll do. You don't need those anymore, Private. Now here we have my personal favorite, the M1919A430 caliber machine gun. I want two men. One is to act as a spotter and reloader, the other will fire the weapon. Come on, Tommy. I'll spot for you. This ain't my cup of tea. Okay! Let her rip, ladies! You may notice we have a fine piece of kraut craftsmanship on the mortar range. Well, you maggots are the first to get a crack at busting that jerry cab into scrap. The first recruit who gets his mortar set up and hits that truck will win my never-ending incredulous surprise! Except maybe for Minoso here, I most seriously doubt any of you will ever be in charge of anything but your own sorry-ass existence. However, 
There will be times when lives depend on one of you maggots making the right call in the field. I expect each of you to rise to such an occasion. Sullivan, there is a Marine bleeding to death in the open. You cannot reach him without support. Let me hear your call for suppressing fire. Suppressing fire! And also, you're one aggressive son of a bitch. I bet you'll be charging headlong into hell for the core. Let me hear you tell these pansies to move up with you. Move up! Outstanding. Gaines, you, on the other hand, strike me as someone who'll turn tail and piss himself at the sight of an advancing enemy. Am I right? No drill, Sergeant! Well, ain't that a shame! If the combat situation dictates, you may need to do just that. You are heavily outnumbered, Private, so you better tell your squad mates to fall back. Fall back! Good. I don't care if you're sucking face with Rita Hayworth herself. You hear a Marine call out, you best respond. Private Conlon, you are being fired upon. Your squad is out of position. You need to get your fire team back into formation. So let's hear you rally these boys! Regroup! Good, let's go! All right, men, that's enough for today. Good work out there. But oh my God, Gaines, you've just been shot! Hit the deck! I said hit the deck! Now, there's two things to do if and when you are hit by an enemy in combat. Number one, apply pressure to the wound. Next, if you can, call for a corpsman. If you're lucky, one will be around somewhere nearby. Private Sullivan, I understand you have a medical background. Yes, Sergeant. Well, lucky us. Make your way over there a bit and play doc for us. Conlon! You take Private Gaines over to Doc to get him patched up, and then hightail it back over here ASAP! Careful where you- Your little girlfriend is bleeding out, Conlon! Get hey, him to your corner! Right, Tommy. Well done, Private Conlon. But you've just been shot as well! Hit the deck! Apply pressure to that wound, Private, or we will lose you! Now, call on that corpsman so we can get you patched up and back into action. All right, men, good work today. I do believe that with a little more work, you may have a fighting chance. Let's get scrubbed up for mass. Move out! For more than two centuries, the United States Marine Corps has fought for freedom. But their infamy, their legend, was forged during the hell of World War II. Triumph cannot exist without hardship. And the price of victory is paid in the blood of men. Faith, courage, and sacrifice paved their road. And that long journey began in the early hours of December 7th. 1941.
first time in Hawaii, huh? Well, you can't beat the scenery. Looking good, Mary. <laughs> Hi, Bobby. You could pick a worse place to spend your time, let me tell you. Chief McAfee escorting Private Thomas Conlon. Uh, yes, sir. Private Conlon. You're clear to proceed. Welcome to Pearl. That's the officer's quarters back there. But you and I work for a living, so that's probably the last time you'll see the place. Anyway, that big building up there is Paquette Hall. Enlisted quarters. Hell, those guys even have a swimming pool. Rough going, let me tell you. That's Admiral Kimmel's place. Sink back headquarters. He can come across a little stiff, but he's on the level. Hell, I guess I wouldn't relax much either in his shoes. Chief of the Pacific and all. Or what's left of it anyway. They send a couple more Hitler's way every week now. Rest of the area is mostly the submarine base. Yeah, those bubbleheads kind of keep to themselves, you know? It's being cooped up like that all the time. Makes them a little crazy. That big one's the dive tower where they practice rescue. When you get in trouble in a sub, there ain't much anybody can do. Fish Food City. <laughs> Say hey, Joe. Yankees call you up yet? Ah, uh, I think they're having a hard time finding me, Chief. I got a PT skipper who's gonna give you a ride over. Did you pull the cherry assignment? Arizona just got an overhaul in 31. Yeah, she's a good ship. Look at these bums loafing off up here. Good thing the war's in the other ocean. I uh, hope I'm not interrupting. Absolutely not, sir. Just going over the latest specs with the men, sir. You guys ready to get this foot slug over to the AZ? Sure thing, sir. What the hell? Sheesh. Damn army, guys. Somebody's gonna catch hell for buzzing HQ like that. Look at the meatballs on the wings! Ah! Get to the 